persons who earn less than $2,083 monthly will pay no income tax come January 2023. This is one of the measures highlighted by Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre during his maiden budget address to bring some relief to citizens, households, and companies amid the pandemic and Russia-Ukraine war. Pierre declared that the government placed great emphasis on addressing the immediate and the pressing needs of citizens in the $1.8 billion 2022-2023 budget. Subsidizing cooking gas. Two, increasing personal tax allowance from eighteen to twenty-five thousand dollars. Anybody getting less than two thousand eighty-three dollars will pay no tax. Cushioning consumers from the full impact of rising fuel prices. Four, reducing personal income tax. Five, prioritizing the payment of tax refunds to taxpayers. Six, waiving interest and penalty charges on personal and company income tax. The SLP administration also plans to subsidize the price of rice and sugar. Pierre says the cost of rice and sugar continues to increase steadily. 11. Wave of import duty of $10,000 on vehicles for traveling officers in the public service. 12. Increasing the amount and range of support, of, of support services for vulnerable groups and reinstating the distressed fund. 13. 13. Providing a $500 one-off payment for pensioners. 14. Increase salaries to public servants. 15. Subsidizing the price of rice and sugar to the consumers. Latest increases are valued at latest increases in the prices of these commodities, rice, flour, brown sugar, and white sugar, have kept these prices on change and it is, has cost the government $9.8 million. A youth economy continues to remain dear to Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre's heart. Pierre revealed that youth joblessness is a major challenge for the country. To this end, EC $10 million have been allocated for the youth economy in the budget estimates. Mentorship will cover exposure and appreciation for best business practices the development of discipline, the need to be accountable, and the value of persistence. In keeping with the government's commitment to the young people, an amount of $10 million is provided for the youth economy under the, the Department of Economic Development in the estimates of 2022-2023. The youth economy is the first step in transforming the solution economy driven by technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship, where young people, regardless of their socioeconomic backgrounds, can become active participants in wealth creation and nation building. The $1.8 billion 2022-2023 budget is the largest in St. Lucia's history. Pierre sought to allay concerns about the government's ability to pay for the ambitious policies and initiatives. I'm fully aware that the broad, people-centered, and holistic transformation agenda that we have outlined will, prom will prompt our detractors to retreat behind the usual doubts. Too ambitious, they will say. Too much, too fast, they will say. Pie in the sky, they will scream. Interesting proposals, they will say. But how will you achieve all these things? You copied from us. And where is the revenue going to come from? They will ask. <laughs> But, Mr. Speaker, it is often the case that the doubting Thomases are often the ones with no vision. Persons who do not understand are usually the most skeptical. To those who doubt our capacity to deliver on the goals that we have set, my response is very simple. Examine the historical record of the St. Lucia Labour Party, which I now have the honor to lead. And you will see, at every stage, when history has called upon us to lead at moments of structural transformation and crises, we have stood up to the task and have boldly and steadfastly undertaken the measures that have taken the country into its next stage of development. Prime Minister talked up allotments for Carnival and Emancipation Day celebrations. 
Additionally, the SLP administration will provide grants to community-based tourism businesses. Joachim Duplessis, HDS News Force.